I love this guy, but I'll tell you a story. During the playoffs this year, Wick sat me next to him, and we had a, a, a run where we were up by 20 points. And Wick looked at me and said, you're never sitting next to me again. <laughs> he moved to a different seat. And then they won the game. It was very depressing. So I think he had some type of real... And you guys were winning down in Philly, and you released the confetti early, and, or your people did, and then we came back. And that'll be one of my... I've got pieces of confetti from that game. Yeah, I, I saw... I, keep, they, I carry them I, in my I, wallet. I, I see that they're all over your, your, your house now. You've got this confetti, but, you know, every, uh, every dog has their day. This is the thing about team ownership is that um, you've got to do it for the right reason. You've got to do it to have fun and try to compete and, you know, not do it for money. If you do it for money, it fails. The fans figure it out. If you do it for love and pride, um, it works. We talked about the NFL, that, that uh, it, there's always changing of, you know, teams get good, teams get bad. What, is there going to be different uh, dynamic this year, do you think? Probably. We've been both. We're trying to be good this year. Uh, we're trying <laughs> to be good every year. We've been good. We've been bad. But the Celtics... We like you better bad, by the way. <laughs> we, we really prefer bad Do you bad think way. they're going to be good? Do you think the 76ers are going to be good? This I, I think they're going to be just about the same as last year, which was really good. And the Celtics are going to be a very good team. But that's what makes basketball incredible. And there is change in the NBA. I mean, think about, I think one thing Wick and I definitely agree with is having LeBron out of the East on the West is, is something that neither one of us are upset to not deal with anymore. But I think it's also great for the NBA. I mean, think, of, you know, Wick, what's your perspective on the LeBron effect to the NBA in L.A.? I've known him since the day, known him somewhat, you know, slightly since the day he came into the league. And he's been great for the league. He's been, he's a person of character and obviously, you know, uh, just a guy in every way that has taken this league to another level. Um, and so following him through, I, he's never worn green. You know, I wish he had, um, but he's out west, and we're going to do our best to, uh, you know, to get see, through see, the east without him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but he's been great for the league. And by the way, it's been amazing from a sales perspective. I was just looking uh, recently uh, when, when he signed with the Lakers, the amount of jerseys that we sold immediately based on the kind of verticality of our business was incredible. I mean, and, and by the way, you're not talking about Sixers. You're talking about Fanatics at this point. Just yeah, we're talking about yeah. Fanatics selling LeBron j j um, jerseys was, I think it was one of the biggest jerseys ever sold in the history of the league, just what he did the few days after he became a Laker. But did you sell 23s because he's wearing six now? So you get a whole number. We're actually, we're actually we, we encourage him to change numbers Yeah, right, every exactly. You get a whole, you're going to double down 23 now. this season, six I understand six the business season. of Fanatics. Yeah, it's we'd be thrilled. Business. Thank you. Very good yeah. business. Absolutely. Yeah, that would have been funny if the Sixers jerseys were going off the, the <laughs> yeah, shelves no. because well, I'll, LeBron I'll, I'll was be, I'll be honest. There was actually yep. a video that uh, our team sent us of us making the LeBron jerseys. They said, hey, you should post this on Instagram. I said, actually, this one's a little bit too painful. It was like the day after he announced going to the Lakers, and certainly uh, many teams were fighting to have LeBron. So I actually I couldn't bring myself to post the video. There's now you guys can wear whatever color sneakers you want. Yeah, the players can wear whatever they want. I so mean, you're this, like our players can wear like pink sneakers. Well, they already do, and they did last year, the year before. But like for they, specific, there's like there's like a, yeah. a breast cancer awareness day, and they might wear pink sneakers on that yeah, day. Or it, there's different. It's but, gotten pretty loose over the last couple of years. I'll say this: the league, you know, we partner with the players, the the team ownership, the fans, the league office, the players. It, it really kind of is. It's more knit together than other sports. It's, we're kind of more on the same page. This is another example. Um, and the guys get the revenue from the sneakers, and they want to, you know, Kyrie's on our team. He's got some amazing sneakers. I've, he gave me a pair that's purple on one side and yellow on the other. And it was one of his most popular limited editions, you know. And, I mean, it's just crazy what they have. And it, it's stylish. It's, it, the NBA is going forward, not backward. So I really, okay, I, I may have some streaming here, uh, perhaps, since it's an NBC product, the yep. Ryder Cup, I may have is that how I'm going to be watching hoops eventually? Yeah, we're streaming uh, at the Celtics. We're streaming around. I'm watching our uh, road game tonight uh, streaming on League Pass. You know, we play down in Charlotte. Um, it's a preseason game. But, but I know we have a Comcast partnership in Boston for the next 20 years, and we are building up our streaming. It's tens of thousands now. It's not hundreds of thousands. But, yeah, that's how basketball is a good game for the small screen. Big guys. Brightly lit, indoors, two hours, it works. But, and I think in general, we asked the question of Brian Rolap uh, as our last guest, but yeah. I, I really believe that when we look five, ten years from now, you're going to see streaming and in general the, the technology guys be a big part of the sports media, right? So, I mean, I just think traditional broadcast guys are really important. People aren't going to stop watching television, but we want to reach as many fans as we can as often as we can. So for me, just like you, Wick, I run around and I watch the games on my phone all the time. If I'm actually not at a game, I'm probably watching on my phone as the first um, vehicle for me in your helicopter wick real quickly you said that uh, <laughs> carrying your cheese sticks if you do this for money the fans figure it out yeah. but when you're doing it for fun the money kind of follows right this is a profitable business it is a profitable business i think it's profitable for everybody players you know actually sponsors uh team ownership 
You know, it, it, right. it's all working. But I, I think it's just, I mean, the Celtics particularly, you know, there's, it's just, it's not about money. They're playing us out. We, you, either one of you guys have a Tesla. We got, that's all we got to talk about today. Wick Gross, Krauspeck, thank you. Hey, you got one? I see you. I, I had a hybrid uh, <laughs> uh, BMW. I moved on.